Okay, let me explain this to you. There are two Dragon Ball timelines. The main timeline and the future- Let me tell you about timelines, Toriyama-san. Time travel. One of the most popular tropes in science fiction. The concept of traveling through time in order to change the past or gain insight into humanity has appeared in thousands of stories over the last century. The recent success of Marvel's time travel romp, Avengers Endgame, has brought the subject back into the center of pop culture discussion, which got me thinking about how it applies to Dragon Ball. The concept of time travel first appeared in Dragon Ball Chapter 330, The Coming of King Cold. Future Trunks arrives on the scene, and we soon learn that he's a man from the future, on a mission to save the world. And much like the Avengers, the story of Trunks and time travel doesn't really hold up when you put it under a microscope. So today I want to take a look at the narrative dissonance of time travel in Dragon Ball, compare the quote-unquote lore of the series against its own internal logic, and put together my thesis as to why none of this makes any frickin' sense. And I'll say right now, it's not because fans are too stupid, or because Akira Toriyama and Toei created two of the most complex, thought-provoking narratives on the subject of quantum relativity. They're not super geniuses. They just don't understand their own story. It's what happens when a man who famously doesn't plan ahead and who wrote and drew most of the chapters of his manga in less than 36 hours tries to tackle one of the hardest plot mechanisms out there. So to be clear, this isn't my attempt to draw out Toriyama's grand plan. This isn't a fan theory or a secret guide to the inner workings of a genius or anything like that. This is a video essay on how the narrative logic of time travel within the Dragon Ball franchise does not hold up under scrutiny. But, I would like to begin by saying that I love Dragon Ball. It's been a close friend that has taken care of me and nurtured me through many a failed career and relationships. I simply want to discuss the flaws of something I love with other people who love it so that we can all go, Oh yeah, that really was dumb. But wasn't it cool that one time that Trunks made a lightsaber out of human souls? Let's get started. So what are these rules that don't make any sense? Well, as of writing this video, there are currently two mechanisms of time travel in Dragon Ball. The first is the use of a time machine, like the one built by Bulma. A person can use such a device to go back in time, but they will not rewrite their own history. All they can do is cause a new timeline to splinter off of the one that they left. But if you travel back and forth between two points in time repeatedly, it does not cause even more timelines to break off. A link establishes between points A and B, and a time traveler can cross that link as many times as he or she pleases without splitting reality again. However, this link synchronizes the two timelines so that time passes equally in both. So if you stay in one timeline for five hours and then go back, you'll land five hours after you left. The second method of time travel is the use of a time ring. Each Supreme Kai has a silver time ring, which is supposedly the only allowable means of time travel. They allow the user to move forward in time without creating any new alternate timelines. Their primary function is to allow the gods to go forward in time in order to view cause and effect, and then immediately return to the point from which they left. They are not supposed to be able to allow Kais to travel freely backwards in time, but we later see that they can piggyback off of a time machine in order to break this rule when the plot calls for it. The time rings can also be used to travel between parallel timelines, and each time a new timeline is created, a green duplicate of the silver ring appears. We know from the various gods that show up that time travel is bad. Beerus, Whis, Gawasu, and Zamasu all refer to it as a sin, and consider the creation of a new green time ring to be a worst case event. Why? We're never told. But since the green time rings are so important, how many timelines are there? If you're a casual fan of Dragon Ball Z, you'd probably say two, the main timeline and the future Trunks timeline. If you were really keeping track of all the nonsensical babble going on in the show, you'd say three the two that I just mentioned, and then the one that Cell came from. And of course, if you've watched Dragon Ball Super, you'd say six, one for each ring in Gawasu's vault. This is, I believe, the answer that Toriyama, Toyotaro, and Toei would say is correct. And they would be wrong. They're wrong because the five timelines they think exist couldn't possibly connect to one another without assistance from additional timelines. So what is the correct answer? Theoretically, the original 18 universes came into existence billions of years ago, beginning timeline 1 of the entire Dragon Ball franchise. According to the Dragon Ball Super manga, at some point in the past, a civilization from Universe 12 developed the technology to create a time machine, which one of their scientists used to go back in time. 
This created the first split, breaking off Timeline 2 from Timeline 1. Ag, the Supreme Kai from Universe 12, confiscated the time machine, but it's never clear if this was done in Timeline 1, upon the scientist's return, or in Timeline 2, where he or she landed. This raises a lot of really frustrating questions. If it was confiscated in Timeline 1, what would stop the people in Timeline 2 from building another one? Or if it was confiscated in Timeline 2, wouldn't the other scientists in Timeline 1 try again? This process would repeat on an endless cycle, creating an infinite number of timelines, which is hugely problematic to the series' lore as a whole. And what happens in Universe 12 probably doesn't butterfly effect all the way out to Universe 7, so Bulma would theoretically build a time machine in both of those timelines, spawning even more. We're only supposed to have five timelines at the end of Super, and yet we've already run into a possible infinite loop on the very first time travel event. In any event, we'll do a lot of fan justification to say that Ag confiscated the time machine, had his destroyer buddy Jin wipe out the civilization that invented time travel, and then used his time ring to go to timeline 2 and prevent the time machine from ever being built there. If that seems like a lot of speculating that fans shouldn't have to do, you'd be 100% right. Timeline 2 will become relevant later, but for now, let's focus on Timeline 1. Eventually, Goku contracts a heart virus and dies after killing Frieza and King Cole. Shortly after that, androids 17 and 18 wake up and have their way with the planet for the better part of 20 years. Bulma builds her time machine and Trunks goes back in time. This splits reality again, creating Timeline 3. But this isn't the Trunks that we know from Dragon Ball Z, and Timeline 1 isn't our Trunks' future. This is the Trunks who will eventually be killed by Imperfect Cell. This Trunks travels to Timeline 3 to meet Goku. After he gives him the warning and the heart medication, he goes back to Timeline 1. And this is the first place where the narrative inarguably breaks itself. Assuming that this Trunks behaves exactly the same way as the Trunks that we're familiar with, he would have returned to his world and found it unchanged. Wanting to learn what went wrong with the plan, he sets the date forward three years and goes back to the day that Android 17 and 18 were supposed to wake up. But this is a separate time travel event. He didn't wait three years and then go back in time, he just changed the date five minutes after getting back to his post-apocalyptic future. So a new timeline should have split out of Timeline 1. Trunks shouldn't have been able to go back to Timeline 3. The show never addresses this when we get to the main timelines where these events repeat. The date change should have severed the link between Timeline 1 and 3, so he should have traveled back along Timeline 1 to the day that 17 and 18 were activated, and splintered off a third timeline from there. That would have been a reality that has never yet faced a timeline intrusion, meaning that there wouldn't have been a Trunks who appeared to give Goku the heart medication. Goku should be dead, and the Z Fighters should be totally unprepared for the androids. And that should be the only reality that Trunks can get to with his time machine. If he wanted to stay and help the Z Fighters, he would have had to warn Goku about the heart virus and the androids, and then stayed with them for the next three years. This is the only way he should be able to help out in the past and still return to his own future. So if we're just watching Dragon Ball Z, the series logic falls apart here and becomes completely unsustainable. However, in the Dragon Ball Super manga, Emperor Pilaf, of all frickin' people, does come up with a way that they can selectively travel to different timelines using the time machine. So giving the series all of the benefit of the doubt, maybe future Bulma figured this out too and plotted a course for Trunks so that he could get back to Timeline 3. I mean, that is a really long speculative reach using material that came out 26 years after the fact. But it's the only way this works that I can think of, so whatever, we'll accept it as fact. Anywho, Timeline 1 Trunks somehow travels back to Timeline 3. Regardless of how he got there though, it is a date change and that would make it a separate time travel event. So he wouldn't land in Timeline 3, but would actually cause Timeline 4 to break off and he'd land there. So just to keep track of everything we have so far, Timeline 1 is the original unaltered timeline where both Universe 12 and Bulma discovered time travel. Timeline 2 was created when Universe 12 sent someone back in time. Timeline 3 was created when Bulma sent Trunks back in time to warn Goku. In Timeline 3, the Trunks from Timeline 1 leaves and never reappears. 
Timeline 4 begins the moment that Timeline 1 Trunks tries to go back to Timeline 3. Despite the fact that Trunks never comes back to the past in Timeline 3, but he does in Timeline 4, these realities probably played out pretty similarly. In both realities, the androids probably beat up the Z Fighters. Once Goku recovered from the heart virus, I would assume that he took the Saiyans to the hyperbolic time chamber so that they could try to surpass the Super Saiyan power threshold. In Timeline 4, this would include Trunks, while in Timeline 3, it obviously wouldn't. And while the Saiyans train, Piccolo would have fused with Kami. And my guess is actually that Piccolo killed both Android 17 and 18 in both of these realities, before the Saiyans ever came out of the time chamber. But wait, where is Cell, I hear you asking. The only Cell to exist in either of these timelines is the larva form in Dr. Giro's lab. Why? Because the future Cell that we know and love is still in Timeline 1. So let's go back there. The future Trunks who started in Timeline 1 and now is in Timeline 4 would have completed his training in the Time Chamber and would have been more than powerful enough to defeat the androids. With Timeline 4 safe, he would have used the time machine to travel back to Timeline 1. I'm assuming this is just a return trip so there are no splinter realities here. He kills Android 17 and 18 with little to no difficulty, and then he prepares to go back to Timeline 4 to tell his new friends and deadbeat dad what a good job he did. But before that can happen, the imperfect Cell from Timeline 1 ambushes him, kills him, and steals his time machine. Cell changes the date on the time machine and goes back to a year before Trunks warned Goku about the androids. But this was not a return trip. By changing the date, Cell severed the link between Timelines 1 and 4 and created Timeline 5. So Timeline 1 is pretty messed up. All of the Z Fighters are dead and Cell is gone. I would assume that Bobbity eventually showed up to retrieve Majin Buu, and that Buu spent a period of time terrorizing the universe. Maybe somebody woke Beerus up and told him to deal with the problem. Maybe Buu eventually reached Vampa and died at Broly's hands. Maybe not. No way to know. No matter what, this timeline is pretty dark. Timelines 3 and 4 would be pretty much the same as one another. The androids are dead, Goku is alive. There's still a copy of Cell in the sub-basement of Jiro's lab in both timelines, though. Seven years after the androids are killed, Bobbity shows up. Maybe the Saiyans had reached Super Saiyan 2 by then? But without traveling to the other world, Goku almost certainly never became a Super Saiyan 3, and definitely never learned fusion. But since future Cell never appeared, Mr. Satan never would have become Earth's hero, and never would have been pressured into going to fight Majin Buu. So it's likely that Good Buu and Evil Buu never split, meaning the problem never got as out of hand as we saw. My guess is that Shin tried giving Goku or Gohan the Z-Sword, the old Kai was released, and Ultimate Gohan killed Fat Buu. Assuming Earth wasn't destroyed by Buu, the Cell in Dr. Zero's lab would have woken up a few years later, but at that point, he wouldn't have posed much of a threat. So with all of that, we are done with timelines 1, 3, and 4. Jumping over to timeline 5, Imperfect Cell from timeline 1 arrives four years before the androids are activated. A year later is when Trunks is supposed to arrive, and this creates all sorts of weird issues because now we've got two time travelers interacting with the same realities as one another. When a version of Trunks is supposed to appear in the timeline that Cell landed in, it splits an already split timeline. Timeline 5 continues on without Trunks ever appearing, but in timeline 6, Trunks does appear to warn Goku about the androids. And when Trunks leaves and comes back three years later, that splits off Timeline 7 from Timeline 6, just like it did with Timelines 3 and 4. So in Timeline 5, Cell arrives just after the Frieza arc on Namek. Trunks never appears, and Goku dies of the heart virus. When Androids 17 and 18 wake up, Cell probably absorbs them and becomes perfect. Without Goku to fight him, Cell probably kills everybody and blows up the Earth, possibly resurrecting Majin Buu in the process, but possibly just destroying him since Boo was drained of all of his power from being dormant for so long. In Timeline 6, Trunks appears once and never comes back. So Goku does live in this one. This one is a bit tricky to predict because of how integral Trunks was to the Perfect Cell storyline. Maybe it all played out pretty much the same way, with Cell deciding to host the Cell games after beating up Vegeta. Or, since Vegeta didn't have a partner, maybe Goku and Gohan went into the time chamber first, and Goku killed semi-perfect Cell before he became perfect. I don't know, there are too many variables to parse here. Either it turned out very happily, or it turned out catastrophically. Timeline 7 is the first one that we, the audience, can recognize. 
It's pretty much the Dragon Ball Z timeline and will match up until the Goku Black arc. Trunks arrives to warn Goku, which leads to a series of events that culminate when Gohan kills Cell and Trunks gets in his time machine to go home. But, big question, where the hell is home for this version of Trunks? It can't be timeline one. The future Trunks from that timeline was killed by Cell and we cannot rewrite the history of any given timeline. At this point, there's only one other future timeline in the multiverse. Timeline 2. Yeah, that timeline that we've ignored since the beginning of this video when I first mentioned it, that's the timeline that our future Trunks comes from. How is that possible? Well, that's a fantastic question, and I don't know the answer. The series lore has once again collapsed in on itself because this guy shouldn't be able to reach any other timelines that splintered off of Timeline 1. The best that I can come up with, and it's really not great, is that it has to do with the amount of time travel that's already occurred. Cell leaves Timeline 1 in order to travel to Timeline 5. This creates one of those temporal bridges between the two timelines. Trunks from Timeline 2 attempts to travel back a long Timeline 2 and accidentally drives his time machine through Cell's bridge, causing him to split the timeline Cell already created. Or, later on in Super, we says that time travel creates a wound in reality? Maybe due to the sheer number of time travel events that have occurred so far, Timeline 2 Trunks just slipped through the cracks? I don't know. All I can guess is that Timeline 2 Trunks somehow ended up in Timeline 6 and later created Timeline 7 because he is literally the last future Trunks in existence at this point. So it had to have been him. Otherwise, we are looking at infinite realities, which the series keeps insisting it does not have. So, with that frustrating mess out of the way, Gohan kills Cell in Timeline 7. Trunks uses a return trip to go back to Timeline 2. He kills Android 17 and 18 and his world's imperfect Cell. Then he plots a return trip to Timeline 7 to tell everyone that he did a good job and theoretically hangs around for the BoJack movie, if you choose to believe that counts. And that is the end of time travel in Dragon Ball Z. After hearing all of this, does anyone still believe that Toriyama and company knew what the hell they were doing when they wrote this thing? No! Moving on to Super, let's just cut this down to the essential components. The only timelines we still care about at this point are Timelines 2, the future Trunks timeline, and Timeline 7, the Dragon Ball Z timeline. In Timeline 2, Bobbity and Deborah show up. With the aid of the Supreme Kai, Trunks kills them and prevents the rebirth of Majin Buu. In Timeline 7, the Buu, Beerus, Golden Frieza, and Champa arcs all play out the way that we've seen on the show. Then, in Timeline 2, Goku Black appears using a time ring. So let's continue by looking at this. At the start of Dragon Ball Super, there are four green time rings, indicating that there are five timelines. Well, here we are, having just covered the time travel events that must exist in order to get to the end of Dragon Ball Z, and we already have seven timelines. And that's assuming that episode of Bardock, Dr. Slump, Jocko the Galactic Patrol Man, Whis's temporal do-overs, Hit's time skip powers, and whatever the hell this is supposed to be, don't count, and that a dumb teenager managed to jump from one splinter timeline to an unrelated splinter timeline without any explanation, and that the universe 12 time travelers didn't accidentally create an infinite loop. All of these assumptions already put us on really shaky fan justification ground, so it's safe to say that someone screwed up somewhere, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't me. So what are these green time rings supposed to represent? If I had to guess, it would be that Toriyama counts the main timeline that we've always watched on the show as one. Future Trunks' timeline is two. The timeline where Cell murdered Trunks and stole his time machine is three. And the original timeline where Universe 12 created a time machine and sent someone back in time is four. That's just my guess because we see these first three within the course of the narrative and the fourth is explicitly talked about in the manga. But this entirely ignores the fact that these four could never interact with one another in order to create the scenarios that we've seen in Toriyama's original story. So once again, the internal logic of the series has failed us. That's what, three times now? In order to move on, we're going to ignore that the duplicating time rings don't make any sense. Goku Black appears in Timeline 2 by using a silver time ring. 
Since we're told these rings don't split time, and because no fewer than three Supreme Kais use them to come to this timeline, I'm gonna say that Timeline 2 isn't split by his appearance. Trunks eventually travels back in time. Again, I'm going to assume that future Bulma already understood the whole frequency navigation thing that Pilaf talked about, and that she aimed the time machine at Timeline 7 instead of Timeline 2 before she died. Trunks goes back in time and splits Timeline 7 in half. Timeline 7 continues without Trunks or Black ever appearing. Theoretically, Zamasu remained Gowasu's apprentice, but there was never any reason for Goku and Beerus to investigate him, so he probably didn't emotionally snap quite as early on. Maybe he killed Gowasu before the Tournament of Power, resulting in a change of leadership for Universe 10 that would have affected the outcome of the tournament. Maybe this is where he first observed Goku, and realized that he needed the Saiyan's power in order to initiate Project Zero Mortals. Or maybe he didn't kill Gowasu yet and became an active participant in the Tournament of Power, fighting and losing to Goku for the first time, and that's when he decided to enact his plans. I don't really know, but this is a fun alternate timeline to speculate about. Timeline 8 is where future Trunks lands and where the present day events of Dragon Ball Super take place. Goku Black's time ring pulls him through the bridge that Trunks created by going to Timeline 8 and then kicks him back out. Since he used the link already established by Trunks in his time machine, I assume that this sort of counts as a return trip and doesn't actually split the timeline again. Goku, Beerus, and Whis travel to Universe 10 in order to investigate an energy source resembling Goku Black's, which turns out to be Zamasu. After meeting the god of sociopathy, the three of them decide that nothing fishy's going on there and go home. Trunks uses a return trip to bring Goku and Vegeta back to the future, and they learn that Goku Black is actually the Zamasu that Goku fought in Timeline 8, and that Black traveled to Timeline 2 in order to team up with future Zamasu. This plan is so damn stupid, I can't fathom how Toyotaro and the writers at Toei didn't look at Toriyama and just start laughing at him when he turned in his story treatment. First of all, when Goku Black was still in his original body, he had to gather the Super Dragon Balls in order to swap bodies with Goku. Why the hell was his plan to trade bodies with Strongman Goku so he could team up with an alternate timeline version of himself so that they could run around blowing up the mortal population of every planet in the multiverse instead of just asking Super Shenron to wipe out the mortal population of every planet in the multiverse? There are 30 billion potentially habitable planets in the universe, and 12 universes in Dragon Ball. It took them over a year to wipe out most of humanity on Earth. Assuming that's anything resembling an average, that's a 360 billion year project. Okay, fine. Black and Zamasu tell the good guys about their stupid plan, and then they elaborate on how they got there, stating that the Zamasu who became Black killed Goku, Chi-Chi, and Goten after stealing Goku's body. Since this is supposed to be the Zamasu from Timeline 8, I guess the only possible explanation is that that timeline is actually aborted and rewritten when Goku and company go back to Timeline 8, armed with knowledge of its direct future. That would of course mean that after 26 years of the franchise lore being time cannot be rewritten, Toriyama and friends just decided, uh, fuck it, maybe it can. So this is what we are going to refer to as Timeline 8, Aborted Future. Black and Zamasu explained that in Timeline 2, they gathered the Dragon Balls in order to make Zamasu immortal. Then they jumped a year into Timeline 2's future with the Time Rings and used the balls again to destroy Super Shenron. Why didn't they bother to make Goku Black Immortal too? Who knows. After learning all of this, the good guys go back to Timeline 8. In order to prevent this whole mess from ever occurring, Beerus obliterates Zamasu before he can murder Gowasu. Presumably, this is what aborts the timeline where present Zamasu steals Goku's body. But here's also where Beerus continues to prove himself to be an incompetent god. After committing deicide, he swears that God-on-God -God violence would surely change the future of another timeline. He's 100% sure of this, and even threatens to kill Trunks for questioning it. But sure enough, the future is unchanged when they get there. Black is still kicking around, and the world still sucks. Black seems to already know that Beerus killed him, 
and claimed that the time ring sheltered him from that paradox. Okay, okay, okay. Question. How are the rings that were designed to prevent paradoxes in the timeline suddenly paradox shelters? The internal narrative logic here seems to be that because the cast has seen one event take place first, it precedes the event that caused it at an earlier point in time. Zamasu wasn't even wearing the damn time ring when he died, so he never could have put it on in order to protect himself as black. Cause and effect don't suddenly reverse because you become aware of one before the other. Ugh, again, the lore just broke. So the bad guys punish the good ones for a while, and then Goku and Vegeta return trip back to the present while Trunks hulks out on Super Saiyan who even knows any more power, and somehow leaps over two and a half decades of established power scaling. The two Saiyans come back, and a lot of weird stuff happens. Eventually, future Zeno nukes the entirety of Timeline 2, meaning the future where Zamasu wished to destroy the Super Dragon Balls became Timeline 2 Aborted Future. That future never could have actually happened because that future was wiped out by Zeno. When Black and Zamasu jumped forward to that point, they should have appeared in the empty void and there shouldn't have been any Dragon Balls to use. But that didn't happen because no one writing this show understands that cause and effect don't stop existing because you see them in the wrong order. The good guys escape back to Timeline 8, bringing future Zeno with them. Goku delivers future Zeno to the Timeline 8 Zeno and they're both like, cool, new friend. Neither of them give a damn about the fact that Goku and his friends have been having their way with time travel for almost 15 years now, and the Grand Priest shrugs and says, Yo Whis, Universe 7 seems pretty cool, I might drop by sometime. All of that talk about sin and Grand Zeno's laws amounted to nothing. That's just lazy writing. Then, back on Earth, for reasons that I cannot fathom, Whis scolds Beerus because killing Zamasu created a new timeline and a new time ring. Remember, this is the murder that Whis helped plan and execute, and he's blaming Beerus for the consequences. But more importantly than this, how could this possibly create a new timeline? At that point in Timeline 8, neither of the two gods were time travelers. What possible impact could that have on the timeline? How is this a time travel event? Is this just a rule that gods killing gods breaks time? It's arbitrary, and this Timeline 9 does nothing to resolve the plot and doesn't close any plot holes. It just creates more. We says that Beerus never killed Zamasu in this timeline. So since Zamasu is alive and aware of Goku in this reality, there's absolutely nothing to stop the process from repeating and for him to become Goku Black again. I think this is supposed to be the thing that resolves the paradox of how Zamasu became Black because Goku and Beerus investigated him for already being black? But since we've established that there's a finite number of timelines, and that the original Goku Black from Timeline 8 chose to go to Timeline 2 because it was suited to his cause, wouldn't the Zamasu from Timeline 9 steal Goku's body and make the same determination? Isn't it a foregone conclusion that he would go back to the same point in the same parallel timeline as his aborted Timeline 8 counterpart? So wouldn't two Goku Blacks show up in Timeline 2 and suddenly we'd have a paradoxical threesome? Or I don't know, maybe Timeline 9 Zamasu used his time ring to observe Timeline 2 long enough to see that his counterpart failed there and decided to go mess around in Timeline 1. There's no trunks there to mess things up with time travel, so he and Timeline 1 Zamasu could mess around until they ran afoul of Jiren or Broly or something. But that sure as hell doesn't resolve the paradox as it removes Timeline 9 from relevance to Timelines 2 and 8, which are the ones that we care about. So neither option actually resolves the paradox that's left standing at the end of the show, and both options fail to address the question of, who was the first Goku Black? The guy from Timeline 9 can't have come into existence until his counterpart was Hakai'd out of Timeline 8, and that couldn't have happened until Goku and company ran afoul of him in Timeline 2. And wait, when Black and Zamasu first teamed up in Timeline 2, wasn't their first mission to destroy all of the Supreme Kais so that all of the gods of destruction who could stop them would also be terminated? That would mean that these two gods murdered 12 other gods before they came to Earth and met Trunks. So Timeline 2 would have subdivided 12 more times, creating 12 realities where Zamasu didn't kill each of the Supreme Kais. So what we've been calling Timeline 2 since the start of Super has actually been what? Timeline 21? And Zamasu murdered Gowasu three times. 
once in the aborted timeline where he became Goku Black, once in timeline 8 where Goku, Beerus, and Whis were watching him, and once in this weird timeline 9 that was created when Beerus killed Zamasu in timeline 8. So that's three more. <sighs> and to cap off this fiasco, Whis then offers to take Trunks and Mai to a point in their future before it was ever erased, stating that the only catch is that there will be two Mai's and two Trunkses in that future when they arrive. Trunks just says, cool, that's twice the power to protect the Earth. And when everyone else is like, whoa, 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 wait, Whis, wouldn't that bring back Goku Black and Zamasu? Whis just waves it off and says, <coughs> don't worry, stupid mortals. I'll just go with them and tell future Beerus to murder Black, and then I've got something way better than your crappy urn to deal with immortal Zamasu. Excuse me, excuse me, uh, Mr. Weiss, Mr. Weiss, I, I have some questions. Didn't you just scold the kitty cat of destruction for murdering another god because it created a new timeline? Wouldn't this plan require a different destroyer cat to murder another other god? Splitting the timeline again, bringing us up to timeline 25? Couldn't this cause an endless loop where Beerus murders Black, creating a timeline where Black wasn't murdered, where he can still get uppity and enact his plans, ultimately resulting in the end of that timeline until another Whis tells a duplicate Mayan Trunks that he'll just drop them off before that timeline ended and ask another Beerus to murder another new Black? And wouldn't the number of Mai's and Trunkses just keep going up by one in each cycle until there are finally enough Trunkses to just murder Black themselves? How many timelines would that require? How many Trunkses does it require to murder one Goku Black? But despite all of that, Whis does exactly this and sends them to an earlier point in Timeline 2 where another Trunks and Mai are already alive and well and where our main characters couldn't slip back into their old lives because those roles are already occupied thus aborting all of the events that we saw in Timeline 21. So in summary, this brings us up to a total of 25 timelines, 3 aborted timelines, and 2 possible infinite loops when there are only 5 green time rings. I guess we could talk about Super Dragon Ball Heroes splitting the timeline even further, but this video has been long enough and I think I've proven my point. At minimum, we are talking about no fewer than 25 timelines, and that's just using nothing but logic. And given the amount of fan justification we had to do to help the creators along the way, the answer could very well be that there are just infinite timelines created by multiple infinite loops that have occurred so far. Ugh. Oh, I need to go lie down. I'm finally done with that mess. I'm not gonna waste any more of my time or yours with a big outro here. The moral of the story is that nothing about this makes any sense. I honestly think the only reason Toriyama wrote a story about an evil Goku and a future Trunks is because the editorial staff told him to, kinda like they did with Resurrection F and Broly. The man's just not coming up with many of his own ideas anymore. But hey, wasn't it cool that one time that Trunks made a lightsaber out of human souls? Huh? Huh? Alright, I'm out. If you want to see me do the same sort of breakdown for Avengers Endgame, let me know in the comments, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye!